Beloved people of God, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to for worship at, at this first Sunday in Advent. For those who will worship using this recording, welcome to Faith Lutheran's worship service. My name is Reverend Walt Combs, and I'm filling in for Pastor Jane while she is on vacation. If you would like more information about Faith Lutheran Church, please contact us through our church website. It's at faithroseburg.org. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome. We are a church that shares a living, daring confidence in God's grace. Liberated by our faith, we embrace everyone as a whole person with questions, doubts, complexities, and all. We are moved by God's grace to welcome all who have ever felt marginalized, no matter your gender identity, sexual orientation, age, race, ethnicity, marital status, or faith background. We welcome you as we worship, learn, and share Christ's love together. During this prayer of confession, all men make the sign of the cross, the sign marked at baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the tender mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you, we fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those who are different from ourselves. We forget that we are children and turn away from your love. Forgive us and pardon us again. Again for your saving grace. Amen. O oh God, in Christ Jesus, has looked favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are the children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal pr promise, and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. As we light the first candle on the wreath, may we be roused from sleep and be ready to greet our Lord which he, with, when he comes with his saints and angels. May our hearts welcome him with joy. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
The first reading is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 to 13. How can we thank God enough for you in return for all the joy that we feel before our God because of you? Night and day we pray most earnestly that we may see you face to face and restore whatever is lacking in your faith. Now may our God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus Christ direct our way to you. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, just as we abound in love for you. And may he so strengthen your hearts in holiness that you may be blameless before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. Word of God word of life. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said, there will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars. And on earth, distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear, foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, Stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not. Be on guard so that your hearts are not weighed down with dis dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> For the most part, each time we celebrate Christmas, it is a pretty big deal. Lori and I decorate our home inside and out, buy gifts, have our family over, and we go to church pretty much every Sunday. We play all favorite Christmas music and watch Christmas programs on TV that are our favorites. Some of you travel long distances to see family and friends. This is all good stuff, right? But all this is done to celebrate the birth of a peasant boy born some 2,000 years ago in the Middle East. This is amazing if you stop and think about it. However, for some of us, Christmas is more of a hassle than a source of joy and happiness. For many, it brings stress, anxiety, and depression. For so many, unfortunately, Christmas is something to be endured, not enjoyed. My wife and I have had long dis discussions about our tendency to go into debt each year surrounding our Christmas giving. Many of us have been running around frantically at Thanksgiving, trying to keep everyone pleased. 
you know, get the house ready, buy the right gifts, go to all the parties and so on. All this in the middle of a pandemic and supply chain shortage, which will limit some things. However, maybe the Christmas season is another reminder that you are still single. Or it reminds us of, of people who were with us last year and not this year. Then we get to church and pastors are telling us to slow down and experience Advent in, fresh, in a fresh and new way. I think most of us are thinking, give me a break. Or it sounds like the teacher in Charlie Brown, wah, wah, wah. During this Advent, let's try to get back to the basics and remember that we celebrate Christmas anyway, which is God's gift to us of God's presence. We celebrate this season because God gave us the gift of what theologians call the incarnation. That is an infant fully human and fully God. God came to the world and lived among us in the person of Jesus Christ. This doctrine unites all Christians, evangelicals, Catholics, Lutherans, Anglicans, from house churches in Africa to mega churches in the United States, all Christians confess that Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. When you think about all this, it's incredible. Don't you think that God could have chosen a thousand different ways to communicate this with us? But since God designed us, God knew that the best way to communicate with us would to be face to face. So God didn't send us another angel, prophet, or politician, or even an ambassador. God gave us something much greater, God's presence. This is why one of the titles for Jesus is Emmanuel, which means God with us. The gift of God's presence, Colossians 1.9 reads, For God was pleased to have all God's fullness dwell in Jesus. In the next chapter, Paul writes, For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. But Christmas is also about Jesus being fully human as well. What do you think this means? I think it means that Jesus was raised in a Jewish family, ate, slept, cried, played, and experienced what you and I experience, except without disobeying God. Jesus, humanity, means God knows what it is to live on earth. That means that God knows suffering, pain, and disappointment. That means God relates to all that we experience. To know God, we only need to look at Jesus. To know God, we only need to study God's word and to see Jesus in each other. I saw Jesus clearly in each other as we worked together on God's work, our hands this year. God's gift was costly. Every gift that you give this year will cost something, right? I sometimes wish Advent was as simple as easing uh, an opening of a little door uh, on a calendar, eating a piece of chocolate, and know that we will be celebrating the coming of the Lord. I always liked Advent. I liked the way the house looked the music that was played, the bowls of snack out for guests. Remember that ribbon candy? I, I miss that, although I, I, I've been told you can still get it on Amazon. 
Advent was a time of expectation, anticipation, and excitement. But it has also time a, bit, a time when we begin buying the gifts. However, we, we give we give at a cost that is something, right? It will cost you money. It's going to cost you time, and it's going to cost you thought. That's what's expected. But when we receive the gift that is cheap or shows that no thought was put into it, sometimes we get offended, don't we? Even though we pretend to like it, right? But when someone we love goes out of their way to do something very thoughtful and special, we are really touched by their love. Sometimes we even feel bad receiving the gift because we didn't give them something comparable and or comparable. And we knew that it would have taken some sacrifice to give that gift. Remember the middle, the widow's might? The gift that God gave cost God everything, even God's own son. That is what, what makes God's gift of Jesus so special. We all know the verse, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all who believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. From the very start of time, humanity has been in constant rebellion against God and his will for our lives. Out of love, God gave his son to die in our place for our sin. God gave us a very costly gift, not because God felt obligated, but because of God's overwhelming love. Whoever believes in Jesus, whoever places their faith and trust in him, will receive, will receive the gift of eternal life. He is the greatest gift ever given. However, receiving God's gift will cost you. Many people think they are on a journey to find God, not really realizing that God has already found them. Christianity is all about God coming down to find us. The Bible describes all the ways that we struggle against God. If you're like me, you have hurts, habits, and hangups you can't break on your own. Thoughts you don't want, emotions you don't like, fears you can't hide, regrets, regrets you haven't let go of. And you say things you wish you didn't say. God gave us the gift of God's presence. God's gift was costly. Receiving God's gift will cost you. So we need to give more. In light of all this, the challenge for us today is to give more. But give more what? I'm not meaning to sound like Billy Graham, but for some of us, it's time to give your heart to Jesus. For some of us, it's giving all our hearts to God. All of it. Once we do this, just like the gifts you've been given on Christmas, you receive it. You believe it is yours, and you say thank you. You think about the gift we are about to receive in the Eucharist. Jesus comes to us in a gift of body and blood. Think about the other gifts we receive at Christmas. After you open them, Will you really feel your life to be different? The gift we are about to receive is truly, truly amazing. It is a different kind of gift. I believe it is a, the best gift you will be given or will ever get. It also connects you with a communal experience with the people you love. In conclusion,
the most priceless gift <clears throat> gift you give anyone this advent is your time you can all make more money and buy more stuff but you can't buy time each of us has the same amount of time 24 hours every day and seven days a week when you give someone your time you are giving them a portion of your life that you never get back how can we give more relationally this year if you are single even in a, this pandemic safely gather and do something special if you are in a relationship, plan a special date for your significant other. Or have a group of single people over to your house to encourage them through these difficult times. With our church family, get out your directory and call some of them today. And maybe you don't know them well and ask how they're doing. Give more by serving on Sunday or offer to serve on Christmas Eve service. There are many ways to give more relationally this Advent and Christmas season. What is the one thing you'll do? Jesus gave us the gift of his presence in this Eucharist. Let's give others the gift of your presence this Advent and Christmas season. Amen. You are salt for the earth, oh people. Salt for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of life, oh people. Life in the kingdom of God. As we gather in our homes, yet together as one community, let us pray for the needs of the world, responding to each petition with, God in your mercy, hear us. The readers will say, and together we pray. The congregation response is, God in your mercy, hear us. God of presence and peace, strengthen your church around the globe to proclaim the message of your love coming to the world. Open our hearts to recognize your face in all people and in all creation. And together we pray, God, God in, in your, your mercy, mercy, hear us. us.
God of mighty redwoods and microscopic plants, fields and city party parks, the wind and the waves, be a healing balm to our wounded planet. May we nurture what you have lovingly created. And together we pray, God, God in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear us. us. God of equity and compassion, bring righteousness and goodness to all peoples of the earth. Give a heart of discernment and integrity to leaders in our community, in our nation, and in our world. And together we pray, God, God in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear us. us. God of comfort and care, be present with those who watch and wait. Come to all who await births, deaths, divorces, new unions, new jobs, retirements, healing, and life transitions of every kind. And together we pray, God, God in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear us. us. God of healing, we pray for all who are sick and suffering in body, mind, and spirit, especially Diane A., Gary A., Mark A., Amanda B., Delbert B., Karen F., Phil N., Rachel P., Nick R., Ken R., Sarah and family, Samantha T., Skip T., Rita W., Tracy, Cassie, Baxter, Lori C. We pray for those whose names we silently lift up to you. May they all know your healing light and love. And together we pray. God, God in your mercy, mercy hear, hear us. us. God of promises kept and new dreams awakened, shelter your people from destructive storms. We pray for those whose lives have been upended by natural disasters in the United States, Haiti, and other places. We pray for the work of the Lutheran Disaster Response, Lutheran World Relief, ELCA World Hunger, Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services, and other relief organizations. And together we pray, God, God in, in your, your mercy, mercy hear, hear us. God of companionship and community, we give you thanks for the saints who sojourned with us and now abide in you. Even in distress and uncertainty, make us confident that your promises endure forever. And together we pray, God, God in your mercy, mercy hear us. us. God of new life, you come among us in the places that we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts, of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please unmute yourselves at this time and <laughs> offer your each other the sign of peace. Peace, everyone. Good morning, everybody. Peace to peace everybody. everybody. Good morning. Looks like we have a small crowd this morning. What? Yeah. <laughs> God's peace. To God's, God's peace. To all. God's peace to all. Please mute yourselves. Oh, I'm sorry. Please remain unmuted. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And the Lord be with you. With you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to unto the Lord. the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give all thanks and praise. Please mute yourself. 
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourselves. And when we had fallen into, into sin and became subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus, our eternal and your only son, to share our human nature and to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night in which he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink you all of this. This is the blood of my new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remembrance of sin. Whenever you drink of this, do this in remembrance of me. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer these your gifts sanctify them by your holy spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your son the holy food and drink of all and an unending life in him sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy and peace and come into your last days with your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom all this we ask for our lord jesus christ's sake by him and with him and in him in the unity of the holy spirit all honor and glory is yours almighty father now and forever amen, amen. Please unmute yourselves. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Amen. Please mute yourself. Beloved, even as we are communing in our homes and yet we are together, here is bread, here is wine, here is Jesus. Please share the body and blood of Christ with the ones who you are with using the words, this is the body of Christ given for you, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. If you are alone, please commune with me. Eat, drink. This is the body of Christ given for you.
This is the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. 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 This time, uh, anyone with announcements, please bring them forth. Okay. Um, Ed, would you be able to, I have so many other announcements. I'm going to let someone else talk here. Could you do an update just on what we're looking at for in-house services coming up? Our hopes, anyhow. On the what now? On, on the our hopes and, and dreams for in-house services coming okay. up. Okay, yep. Where we're um, at. Okay. Uh, everything is hooked up and ready to go equipment-wise. Um, on December 1st, I think that's a Wednesday night, I believe, this week. Anyway, mm -hmm. we're going to have a trial run. Um, with all of the equipment and, and doing the live stream onto YouTube and et cetera, and see if, make sure everything is operational. And then uh, if everything works, uh, what we're looking at is on December 12th, we will start services again in the sanctuary as well as the live stream. So people can attend church in person at the church or can uh, attend through live stream uh, on their, you know, computers or iPads or whatever. Um, we will be doing some cautionary things in the sanctuary, such as every other pew will be, you know, ribboned off and uh, we'll be wearing masks, etc. cetera. Um, but our goal is to be back in the sanctuary on December 12th. Yeah. That's our, that's our hope and prayer, everybody. So uh, if you stop in, we've already changed colors and the Advent wreath has been set up. So we're anticipating with uh, prayerful thoughts that that will take place. I do have, first of all, is there any other announcements? One other any? thing, oh, go ahead, one other thing when, Wendy. Uh, yeah. uh, next Saturday, December 4th, um, mm -hmm. we need some assistance to help set up the tree. Um, we're gonna meet at nine o'clock at the church and uh, set the tree up, get the lights on it and get everything ready. And then on December 12th, after the service, we're going to decorate the tree. So if you can come Saturday, help set it up. And then remember on December 12th, after the service, we will decorate the tree. Good, thank you for that reminder. And young and old, you can always take one decoration and put it up on the tree. So it's you know, all things are possible. So uh, I do have from Rebecca, she asked me to please announce today that uh, one, thank you to everyone who bought gift cards for our college students and military. Those have already been sent off. And secondly, Crossroads, our, our music uh, added wonderful people, are going to be meeting at 5 o'clock this Wednesday. All are welcome. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, everybody. Um, and then I also have a couple things as we definitely are at that uh, approach to Christmas. We will once again have poinsettias in the uh, sanctuary. And if you would like to, uh, the small ones are $10, the larger ones are 15, and they can be just given as gifts or they can be given in memory or honor of someone else as well. The other part of that is that each year we like to share with Barry and, and Pastor Jane our appreciation of Christmas for them also. So if you would like to contribute to Pastor and Barry's Christmas gift, uh, you can do both of these things for the poinsettias and for Pastor and Barry's gift. Uh, either take them to the office and give them to Jackie. Uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong, but our office hours are Tuesday through Fridays, 10 to 2. So you'll find Jack. Thank you, Barb. Okay, good. We got that girl. And then also, uh, if not, then you can mail them in. So uh, just address them to the church and the post office will get it there for you. So I think that we've covered it all. Ed, did I forget anything from the council meeting? I was like squirrely here. We got it. I think we're all right. 
I think so. Good. Okay. So everyone, go in peace and serve the Lord. And Barb, do you want to go ahead and get us into chat rooms in? Thank you, everybody.